I'm Foy. And I'm Justin. And together we are pajamas. And we just watched My Little Pony the movie. Because he wanted to see it. Yes. I remember you tried to get us to go see it in the theaters. And yes. I, I said, I was like, can we wait until it comes out on TPD? And I said, very well. You did. You're like, oh, wait. Yeah, we went and took him out on video on demand and we watched it. And so I've seen My Little Pony, like maybe two episodes of it before. Mm -hmm. um, you are a brony, I guess is the terminology. You are a big fan of the show. Yes, and I will admit that on camera that I love the show My Little Pony and I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> no, should you be. Nothing wrong with that. So being the fan of the show, I'm just a passerby. So I'll have my own insight. So we have fan versus... I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So we'll have like two different uh, takes on the movie. But you're the big fan of the movie mm -hmm. of the show. So what did you think? It was marvelous. Actually, it was more than I expected that it would be. The way that I did indeed like aesthetically the colors, it was much more vibrant than the, the show actually is. Oh, is it? Yes, it oh, showed okay. much more detail. They definitely reserved an immense amount of work and precision for this movie. Okay. And the music also fit very well. Of course, as, as usual, the theme of the movie was friendship. Mm -hmm. And what I really liked about this was that it showed the complexity of social relations and interactions with others, that it isn't as simple Things aren't as simple as, well, a cartoon would put it. While being a cartoon, mm -hmm. it showed that. Okay. It's much more, it isn't as simple as, uh, that social interactions aren't as simple as they're portrayed in the fairy tales of who is good and who is bad, or trust everybody or trust nobody. That put, superimposing people into a group and thinking, they're all like this, that it isn't the case. All right, sorry about that, camera foes. You were saying about, uh, like, oh. the, the way superimposing friendship uh, and stuff. And the... Yes, superimposing. For example, it showed two, three different versions. One at the beginning, in which they naively trusted everyone. Yeah. And then there was the commander who gave her point of view, trust no one but yourself. Mm -hmm. And the third one, in which... What they're both doing incorrectly is that they are judging everybody without even knowing them and mm -hmm. thinking the, that they're all the same. But people, well, sentient beings aren't all the same. Right. It also showed that there were two other things. Such as in the beginning, Princess Twilight wanted to have the help of the other princesses but they said that she's able to do things herself, mm -hmm. which that's a part of personal responsibility. And though that is also true, it's especially effective in the form of friendship when you have several individuals who are doing the best of their effort to make something magical. Okay. Yes. So it shows that, yes, indeed, friendship is important. Friendship is magic. Yes. It's, it's very beneficial to help others. And also, there's a part about personal responsibility. And at the same time, realizing that, being realistic, that, yes, there's that. And there are also limitations to each. That, yes, you do have, one can do many things, but one is only one person. And as a group, you can, with all of them thinking in a team way, of giving all that they have, they can make something wonderful. Justin's thesis on My Little Pony, the movie. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. What did you think of it? Well, I don't watch the show. Like, is that... Because I just have, like, stuff written down and questions and whatnot. But yes. So... I, su I suspect that the balance of personal responsibility and teamwork... And the balance of trust and not trust gives some of the benefit of the doubt and 
have it be on an individual basis instead, instead of lumping everybody into one thing. Those seem to be the two central themes in its... Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. In its conveyance of well, yeah, what cause, friendship cause, is. Cause... Uh, Tempest and the Princess one. Um, mm-hmm. Those are the, the those were the two. There two. Yeah, so those are the central themes because those are their two story arcs. Yes, and that they actually it wasn't a it wasn't a simple cartoonish. One is good because one is good, or one is bad because one is bad. Showing that good and bad they're very subjective. Mm-hmm. They actually showed. Well, yes, the. King was a stereotypical villain. He's evil for the sake of being evil. Mm -hmm. But it also showed that the commander, the reason why she is that way is because life didn't give her a chance in her youth. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, she would think this way because that's how life treated her. She is simply responding likewise. Right. And Princess Twilight, she had a completely different upbringing she had a different childhood, so mm-hmm. she she would approach, because of her life experiences, she will approach life differently. And so it isn't, it also can show that good and bad aren't as concrete as it may at first seem to children. Right. The, sh- the movie definitely portrays these complex themes in a way that people of all ages can understand. That's what I really like about it. That's okay. Fair enough. And uh, what, you said that you had questions. What questions did you have? Okay. <laughs> this is a non-fan's take on... Well, it doesn't have my take on the movie. He's, I mean, the plot itself, yeah, you're dead on about. Yes. Um, one, okay, let me just say, before I go through my two and a half pages of notes, um, the only time I've watched My Little Pony, hypothetically, I may have been stoned. I, I was not this time because hypothetically I don't do that anymore. And so I watched it from a very sober point of view, but I still, I wasn't making fun of the movie. I wasn't, you know, anything like that. That's just childish. So I forgave the silly parts. Yeah. So taking into consideration that it, it it's, it was made it, personally, one can be any age and watch this, both the show and the movie. But I also do realize that, well, since it is its target audience is children, it is going to have childlike humor in it. Mm-hmm. So with the if it there's some things that may seem a bit corny or cheesy, well take that into consideration. Yeah, okay. So Okay, first of all, why do the two other princesses have swirly hair? That is actually a good question. Uh, they're actually both sisters. Oh, okay. That could explain it then. Okay. Yes. Why? Do we know who? I mean, I know one's the sun, one's the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, do we know who their parents are? Uh, to my awareness, no. Okay. That's well, still okay. Well, them being sisters answers that question. The, the dark, the dark past that I am not aware of at this moment. Okay. In the beginning, there was the one that was conducting the animals. Before, I think, Rainbow Dash, I think, flew by. Mm-hmm. I think. Fluttershy, the one with the pink hair? She was, was she... conducting the animals. Oh, was that her conducting the animals? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, then I feel bad what I wrote, because I actually like Fluttershy. A lot. Yes, she's the one who is... I suppose that to give her an official title, she would be the caretaker of animals. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, then I won't ask that question, because that's just me. Uh, so I wrote, oh God, they're singing, because I didn't know that they sang. Oh yes, in practically every episode, there's at least one song. Okay, I don't remember that. That's how hypothetically stoned I must have been. I wrote, <laughs> when does the most interesting character, Nightmare Moon, show up? Uh, well, she did and didn't, depending upon how you look at it. What because, do you, do you remember Princess Luna, the blue alloc? Elecorn. The one that could control the moon? Yes. Yeah. She was Nightmare Moon. Okay. What had occurred was that in the past, uh, this is revealed in the series, she had become jealous of her sister, Princess Celestia, because she was the one who brought up the sun and people enjoyed 
being out and about and seemed to like her more. And out of jealousy, she became Nightmare Moon mm. until she was then shown, well, actually, Princess Twilight and her friends had defeated her and she eventually then became back to Princess Luna. That's, a, that's, just, that's just disappointing because so, uh, Nightmare Moon is awesome. This is probably a yes just because of the nature of the show. Do they always shoehorn like <clears throat> pony and horse references into the dialogue? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is the Storm King a regular character? No, he's completely okay. new to my awareness. I wrote, the ship is like, fuck your party. Because it just pretty much came in at the right time and just crashed into the party. Yes, indeed. Is Tempest a regular character? She's new. I like Tempest. But yeah, so she was a very... I like. I definitely liked her as a villain. She was actually... Villainous, not a kooky villain like yeah, the Storm King. Yeah, I wrote does. that later. Um, she was actually the sort of villainy that I like. There are I've noticed that in cartoons there are three sorts of villains: the the kooky villains, the the extremely brutal, very violent villains, and then there are the sophisticated, sneaky mm. villains. She would definitely be a much more mature. Yeah. Villain. Yeah. That she isn't she isn't unaware of what's going on. She also doesn't lash out for no reason at all. She is actually cognizant. She's aware of what she's doing. Well she and also she also doesn't have stupid motivations. But and yes, like the other two may have. She th- there's actually a reason for why she is the way that she is. She wants to have a horn back. Yeah. And so she even though it's a paradox to what she said earlier, trust no one, she put her trust in the Storm King. That's true, yeah, I didn't think of that. Well, which leads me to think that the only reason why she may have was because from her point of view, it seemed like he was going to be the winner of this when she right. cons- considered her different options. Okay, well then the, this stuff, this next, my next question is a moot point, because I wrote, does Tempest always have evil Pokeballs? Because you're storing evil Pokeballs, turning other ponies into crystal. Her power was awesome. Turn things into crystal, and if she walked, she made like crystal noise, like clink, 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 when she walked. I like that. I like Tempest a lot. Tempest Tempest is my new, well, was my favorite. Since Night My Moon is no more. One of my favorite lines in the entire movie. All this power wasted on parties. Well, yes. It could be worded that way, I suppose. That's what she said. It was awesome. I wrote there, so Storm King is an idiot, Mm -hmm. and Tempest is actually awesome. Storm King was a stupid bad guy. Just, ugh. Yes, I personally think that, well, he could have been written a little better. Then I wrote, Tempest, this is early on, after we meet the Storm King, Tempest is going to turn good, turn on the Storm King. Oh, you saw that? Oh, yeah, that was clear foreshadowing, yeah. And, well, yes, I did see that that was a possibility considering the way that it was going but it was suspenseful of how it was going to occur then i wrote so is the pink one always batshit crazy yes okay i wrote pinkie pie always is okay like that i wrote uh oh another song this was the cat song i stopped after this because there was like five or six more songs and i just went with it Yes, it isn't only about the pretty colors, it's also about the music. I wrote, so the ponies just got the pirate birds killed. Didn't happen, but, you know. Seemingly. Yeah, seemingly, yes. I wrote, how are Pinkie Pie and Princess Sky Star, Princess of the Hippogriffs, not BFFs? They're like the same person. Except that Princess Sky Star didn't have any friends. Hmm. They're like the same, like, just batshit crazy ADD. It seems that, well, maybe they respond. Maybe it's because what occurred was that those around them responded differently. That in Ponyville, they, in an equestrian. Is that they, the name of the place? Well, is it called Ponyville? Well, Ponyville is the little town that they live in. Okay. What we saw was the capital of Equestria. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I gotcha. Cantalot. Uh, okay. I wrote, so the hippogriffs think they're being nice, the ponies, but uh, the princess is using her friends to manipulate the lonely princess so she can steal the pearl. So that's kind of a dick move. Oh, yes. And it played out that way, which I was glad it did. And that kind of goes in what you said about people not being what they seem all the time. Because mm -hmm. she seemed like she was like the nice, sweet person. She snapped at her friends later. Yes. Especially Pinkie Pie in particular. And she used her friends to try and do something manipulative and devious. Yes. I, I was like, she's kind of a bitch. It does show that... It, it does show that the different characters are much more complex than they may at first seem. Right. That they have their own thought processes. So just when she did that, from her point of view, that w what she was doing from her point of view was for the good of Equestria, mm -hmm. which is the whole place. Right. The whole world. So instead of Tempest singing a song to Princess Twilight, turn her to Crystal, take her power, go to the Storm King. I was, I was like, this is Bond villain levels of stalling and losing, which ended up not happening, which I was surprised. But... I was, I was like, you have her, take her back to the Storm King, stop singing her a song. Like, you captured her. Don't sing her a bloody song, take her back to the Storm King. Just, it just, it was kind of annoying. Like, okay, of all the songs to not sing in, I got why she did it, I understand. But, like, logically, and I understand it's a kid's show on a lot of levels. Maybe not the right time to sing a song. Just saying. Just saying. Then I wrote... Okay, the Storm King is the most idiotic villain ever. Uh, needs more Nightmare Moon. Well, yes, he wasn't exactly the most intimidating villain. Actually, she could have easily have been the most intimidating. She should have been. Yes, as if he would. It would seem as if to make this even more suspenseful, he would be a much more hardcore for form of what she was. Yeah, yeah. That. He was, like, he was just like a bumbling fool. Yes. He could have been something like, well, a sort of villain that does take her point of view, but will never give anyone a chance ever. And will never turn. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. She, cause she could have been a really, like, constant villain for them. Like, going to the show, to the TV show as well. Like, she could have lost this battle. And then, if she had been the main villain, is what I'm saying, yes. she could have lost this battle and then carried on into the TV show being a main antagonist for them. I think it would have been more interesting. Because mm -hmm. Storm King is stupid. Really, really stupid. Even for kids' show, it's stupid. I get why they did that. I get it. It's just, I didn't like him. Then they congratulate Princess Twilight and her friends. Again, dick move. Like, they all, did, like, name them. Is it always, like, does she always get all the credit? You did it earlier when you said that Tw Princess Twilight and her friends stopped at Nightmare Moon. Well, well, they all did it, not just fucking Princess Twilight. Well, yes. Is she? Is she really it's like? Is, no, but she, it's like she's a twat. Like, why does she get all the credit? Is she that much of an egomaniac? Uh, well, you can say you can say Princess Twilight and Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy and the country one and the diva one and the. The dragon thing, like... Uh, well, that's quite a mouthful, so how about... No! Princess Twilight and her friends. No, that's just it's rude. Uh, well, it's just rude. she is the princess, and they're not. I know, you probably don't know who Sia is, the singer. Mm. Okay. Well, to everyone at home, uh, Songbird Serenade is voiced and sung by Sia, who I love. I've liked her since, like, 07. Huge fan of hers. I liked that Songbu Serenade had Sia's hairstyle. That was a nice touch with the black and the white. It was a really cool touch. And that's all that's all my notes, literally. Like that's just all I wrote while we watched it. So that's Yes, I was wondering what you thought of her and her singing. And well, what I like, did you like that? Well, I like Sia. I like Sia a lot. She's really good. I mean I didn't care for the song that she sung in the movie, but I like her songs in general. When yes. she's when she's not a pony. All right, you like her when she is herself instead of a fictional character. Yeah, she's kind of a fictional character too, though. She's cool, Alexia. You should like see her more. She's like a more subdued, 
I won't say Lady Gaga, but she has a really interesting style and hmm. presence, and she's very cool. I've, I've actually met her. She's really nice, so it was really cool to see that the pony version of her kind of, in a way, resembled her in real life. Yes. So, I mean, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was there. Uh, too many songs. But I understand that's part of the course with this show, so I'm not going to be angry about it. I would say to actually watch this show and to really enjoy it, I would have to hypothetically be stoned. I don't. It's not. It's not really engaging sober, <laughs> or maybe drunk. I could probably maybe try drunk My Little Pony. We could do a drunk My Little Pony review sometime in the future. I don't regret watching it, and I'm glad that you finally got to see it. Because you've been mm -hmm. waiting patiently, so that's my thoughts. I would give it like five out of ten. Like, didn't wasn't horrible. Wasn't as good as some other animation I've seen. But I know it was geared towards a different audience. Yes. And my brain was not chemically induced to handle such things. Well, there was one problem with the movie that I did have. It's very minor. I know why it wasn't done, because it would have made things a little more complicated. Well, it would, the plot, it would have made things a little more complicated than what to do about this, well, what about that was that this chord was only referenced. Who's that? I really love the character Discord. He is the spirit of chaos. Oh. I think that you may like him. Yeah, I probably would. I like the villains. And, well, he is a... He's another transition from villain to a good character. Oh. But... Even when he, even though after he transitions to a good character, he is still mischievous and chaotic in his own way. Okay. What was what was Discord referenced? Oh, when Pinkie Pie made the balloon character, that was oh, an image of Discord. Okay. I... And then while the Serenade Pony was singing at the bottom right of the stage, you can see a silhouette of Discord being in the audience. Oh, okay. Because he is the only one with. The antlers. Interesting. Well, having a horse face, but yet having the antlers. Well, well, an antler and a goat horn. Okay. Weird. It would probably make sense if you saw a picture of him. Right, yeah, of course, of course. That, that would be my only complaint, but I do realize that if he were to be included in this, then, well, that's going to complicate things, because now they have to deal with chaotic magic, and why... It, why it is used and why it isn't used in different scenes. And of course, it would. He is quite a dominating character in that it's easy for much attention to be drawn to him. And the movie is probably much more to be about the ponies than about one about character. About the ponies. It's about Princess Twilight and her arrogant, egomaniacal, narcissistic. I want friends so they can make me look better and I can be the only one mentioned when we say, when we, we, we save Equestria. But it's not because she's megalomaniacal. She does use her magic. She could use her magic a lot more. Rainbow Dash used its magic. Mm -hmm. Pinkie Pie just ran around like she was fucking on crack the entire time. I like Fluttershy though. Other than Nightmare Moon, which is my favorite, when Nightmare Moon is Nightmare Moon and not Princess Luna, Fluttershy is awesome. And also has a really awesome name. And Tempest is a better name than what Tempest revealed her name as. Uh, yes, it was a long yeah. and silly name. And yes, wise decision to save that for the very end so that it wouldn't ruin the yeah. other scenes. With so that. I hope that Tempest is a permanent character now. And I hope that Tempest is still called Tempest. And oh, but Tempest turns evil again soon because Tempest was an awesome villain. Storm King was ridiculous. Yes, he's gone now in a way that it's. I've noticed that it seems to be that death in cartoons is something that's taboo. Yeah. Well, when he shattered, I was like, oh my god, it's going to be shitty when he uncrystallizes or decrystallizes or whatever. When he stops being crystal, oh my god, that's going to suck. <laughs> like, that's going to be so painful. <laughs> yes, it, like when Discord was villainous, he was 
turned into stone, then he came back, then was turned back into stone and then came back. And is that what you mean that eventually would would he somehow escape? No, no. What I'm saying is imagine that you are in My Little Pony Land and you are turned into crystal by Tempest and you were then shattered into like several pieces. But it's a cartoon, so you're not really dead. So eventually you're going to uncrystallize. But you're in like 50 pieces. That's going to hurt. Yes. Like you've been decapitated and dismembered. Or maybe and then was, you wake up. Or maybe it was a safe way to kill the character while at the same time not having it be as... Traumatic. Um, something like that. Yeah. Like how sometimes death is portrayed when it is portrayed. Such as in Disney... I remember that one scene that is brought up constantly as far as it being very somber and dark scene is the death of Mufasa in The Lion King. Right, yeah. When it does show his dead corpse there. And there's also Bambi when the mother isn't actually shown, but it's told to him that he will never see his mother again, Mm. which happens after the, sometime after the gunshot scene. Right. And I do see that for some children, death can be a very emotional and well, very kind of, sad scene. Well, it also has to be a hard concept to wrap your mind around when you're a child. So so I do see that it's probably a safe way to kill, but at the same time not have it be too obvious that he is dead. My entire, so my entire of, point was that when he wakes up, if he wakes up, it's going to suck. Yes. So instead of dead, it could be said that he's gone. Sorry. Forever. Agreed. All right. Well, I think we should wrap it up. All right. Anything else you'd like to say about My Little Pony the movie? Oh, I highly recommend it, and I would highly suggest it to any audience of all ages. It's something for everyone to share. And if you are of legal age and can take part in legal and or should be legal things to make it watchable, Shifty eyes do it. And until then, I'm Justin. (laughs) And I'm Fi. And we will see you after we watch the next movie, whenever that is. So, if you like the video, please shoot it a like. Subscribe to the channel. And... Yeah, you you see, you ruined my flow. You... You have a good night all day, whatever it is, wherever you are. Cheers. Goodbye. I should have like come up with like a pony way to say it, like good. I don't know how. It, I, what would be a pony like? A, good hoofs or nays? Whatever, yeah. whatever it is, wherever you born. Well, if you were to say, ladies and gentlemen, that it's constantly replaced with fillies and gentle colts. No, I literally just made pony. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye. Goodbye.